I'm Frank Weiss, and I'm speaking to you about optimizing construction and engineering for the planet. Digital twins and the move towards improved net zero energy and industry decarbonization. We hear it almost every day in the news. Global warming and climate change. Multiple studies published in peer-reviewed scientific journals show that 97% of actively publishing climate scientists agree. Climate warming trends over the past century are extremely likely to, to human activities. We have approximately 51 billion tons greenhouse emissions per year globally, even in 2020. If we wanted to change that trend, we need to cut this down to zero. And as one of the recent studies, the Polarstern expedition started to the Arctic on September 20th, 2019 for eight months. 70 researching institutes from over 20 countries were involved. During their 16,000 kilometers travel, they studied current impacts of climate change, especially how ice, wind, currents, and cloud creation are related. Updated results have been published in June. Winters are 10 degrees warmer. Ice diameter has half the size like 130 years ago. The eternal ice will soon not be eternal anymore. And as a result, heat waves like in Europe in summer 2020 are getting more frequent because melting ice has tremendous impacts on the world climate. If we look at the significant climate anomalies and events in January this year, the Arctic sea ice extend was 6.5% below the average in 1981-2010. The US had its second warmest January on record, Africa's warmest January on record, and weather extremes in Europe, like in Spain's capital Madrid, had 30 centimeters of snow in January. And heat waves and fires in Germany are no longer far and few between. Irrespective of climate change, our population growth. According to the United Nations in 2050, over 9.5 billion people, they live 68% in cities. Both nurture the big construction trend to build 230 billion square meters. Hence, until 2060, we will double our building stock. We built a city like New York every month for 40 years. So new challenges arise. Not the known challenges about going faster, increased quality and certainty on delivery, like typically in construction, no new challenges. How to react on pandemics, better health, reduction of pollution, Cities need more energy and through climate change, it gets hotter and colder, more extreme. And we need ways to create materials. Today, in the case of concrete, for one ton of cement, one ton of carbon dioxide, or for one ton of steel, even 1.8 tons of carbon dioxide are created. So assets are broadly unprepared and the current infrastructure still relies mainly on fossil energy. But a part of the population is even not willing to accept that further. What has started small has become a movement. Millennials claim their right to having a future. Those movements have an impact. For instance, the German Bundesverfassungsgericht forced the German government to correct their climate goals in April 21. Importance and urgency have been high. Therefore, a new law has been rapidly prepared and agreed in less than 10 days. So on June 24th, it passed the German Bundestag. And the result, the originally proposed milestone for carbon neutrality at 2050 has been pulled forward by five years to 2045. We can also observe cities starting to prepare themselves. For instance, Singapore, they kicked off research programs with the industry. So let's have a look at this public available recording. If you look at a thermal image of a city and then compare that to a map of vegetation, you'll find that where there's greenery, the temperature is lower. That's because things like asphalt, concrete and shingled roofs absorb more heat from the sun than trees. This is the urban heat island effect and it accounts for higher temperatures in cities, often by several degrees compared with their surroundings. It's becoming a huge risk to human health as growing urban populations exacerbate the heating effects of climate change. 
Heat waves kill more people than any other extreme weather event, more than tornadoes, hurricanes, and even floods. That's why urban heat island mitigation strategies are being studied in Singapore by a group of researchers. The government-backed project called Cooling Singapore is now in the process of combining everything they've learned to create a digital tool that can help cities all over the world, starting with Singapore. So the building sector is the single largest contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions. And as we continue to improve the operational efficiency of our building stock, embodied carbon emissions generated from the production of materials and construction processes are increasingly impactful. So what's the carbon footprint of specific material? How many miles did it travel to construction site? Can composite materials be dismantled and reused or will they end up as landfill? Hence, why our industry is a key driver for climate change and global warming. So we need to change. We need to change how we build and operate. We need alternative approaches. We need enablers, but more importantly, it has to start with goals. Goals agreed at the Paris Act 2016. Goals which kick off the race to net zero. So the majority of countries are at around 2050. Countries like Uruguay, Finland, Austria, Sweden, the mentioned Germany 2045, but also the states like in the US, California um, has agreed for a carbon neutrality goal at 2045. And big economies like the European Union has established the European Green Deal and even step goals of 55% reduction by 2030. Those goals will be translated into actionable targets, which become laws and guidelines in the local markets. So governments and authorities can and will regulate the market transformation. So for instance, to use more green cement and steel instead of the cheapest or even use less cement and steel in total. To nurture innovation of materials with a low carbon footprint and to insist that used materials display their carbon footprint, which can be considered in certifications like Leeds, Briam, or DGNB. In addition, we can observe that big companies start to change their compliance policies to become carbon neutral, like Oracle in 2025. Their customers request it, their employees want it, and they insist on their suppliers and engage as sponsors for events like Race to Net Zero in June where Oracle has been a main sponsor in the last eight years. And on the financial side, trillions of pension fund dollars in the past invested in fossil infrastructure, look for alternatives in renewable infrastructure and green development banks arise and support those projects considering lower carbon footprints. Our thinking needs to change regarding PLM. We need changes in our product life cycle models. We need to move away from cradle to gate or cradle to grave. As shown before, this is also valid for our industry. Modern designs will embrace a more holistic view. Approaches like cradle to cradle, final products are in their production process already considered as a future source for new products. For instance, it should become best practice that a construction element at its end of life can easily be dismantled and each part can be recycled. This goes in line with the Climate Act and government goals because they require more life cycle models. However, none of this can be done without new technologies. They are changing almost all aspects of our lives. Mobile and cloud-based technologies, IoT, AI, sensors, material tracking, robotics, prefabrication, and other technological developments are leading to new business models, new ways of thinking, and a multitude of opportunities. So under the broad band and umbrella of Industry 4.0, the process of digital transformation is reshaping entire industries. A lot of these technologies we apply in the Oracle Innovation Lab with customers and partners. New terms, definitions, and concepts such the ecosystem of digital twin concept arise. 
But digital twins are not new, especially in two other industries. There are many options of what they can be. So let me share our understanding, which is aligned with Building Smart International. A digital twin, also referred as a digital shadow, a digital replica or a digital mirror, is a digital representation of a physical asset. It can be created in parallel to its physical counterpart and spans all the phases of the plan, built, operate and integrate life cycle. Digital Twins already exists in a project as a method for better planning, design and construction. Digital Twins play a role at later phases of the life cycle, especially after commissioning and provide long-term benefits for asset performance, optimization of opportunities, and reliability requirements. Alternatively, digital twins can also be created after physical version of its already exists. During its use phase, physical assets can therefore be digitized when in operation and linked to each other, the physical and digital twin regularly exchange data throughout the plan, build, operate, disassemble life cycle and use phase. Technology like AI, machine learning, sensors and IoT allow for dynamic data gathering in right time data exchange to take place. So what is mainly stopping us? The digital twin concept is limited only by our thinking. Technology is not the limiting factor anymore. As a society and an industry, we need to start embracing these new opportunities more and get started. So let's take one example in healthcare. Global health is very important to all of us and the significance of hospitals has already changed. One of our global customers, Farmit, uses the software solutions from Oracle Construction and Engineering. Farmit is a global company which implemented 960 healthcare projects in 95 countries. With over 27,000 employees, they had 2.2 billion euros turnover 2019 and have 205,000 services for beds in more than 890 facilities. They apply simulations for the environment and energy efficiency, empowered by using Oracle construction and engineering solutions. They use Primavera Cloud. They use the leading Aconex common data environment with a whole global supply chain. They use model coordination and apply a more model-centric approach in their projects. And they also perform project optimizations for workflows and the room program, like in this example shown here. But it's not only about hospitals in isolation. Healthcare facilities or social infrastructure are a part of an ecosystem of digital twins. Imagine you have a digital twin for transportation, autonomous cars, buses, railway, metro, air, all of that is interconnected for transportation as an experience. Energy, it needs renewable energy, solar, wind, and new approaches to balance out the intermittency. Telecom for 5G or even 6G, water and waste, and all of that integrated into the environment. Imagine we would be able to connect those digital twins stronger together and we are able to provide better insights for cities and citizens means for all of us. For us in construction and engineering, we support our customers on their journey. For that, we also benefit from the deep knowledge of our other Oracle GBUs, like the Oracle Utility GBU, the Communication GBU, Public GBU, and so forth. All of them are specialized to vertical markets. And we combine that together in research and investigate together lots of combined use cases in our Oracle Innovation Lab to showcase, but also to learn together with the partners and customers. In addition, we engage with the industry partners and Building Smart International to support better interoperability for the future. Allow me to highlight the Oracle Autonomous Database and Oracle's modern and high-performing cloud infrastructure. These core 
Oracle technologies enable our solutions to another level. Although there are existing challenges in digital twins regarding data formats, software versions, ontologies, etc., if the data is collected in the cloud, an integration of data elements becomes already much easier. So one key element is security. Our offerings ensure highest security and compliance, which are crucial elements in a smart city, but also in an asset context. So when speaking about the digital twin of an asset, the focus lies often on the operational digital twin and the performance digital twin. But one of the biggest challenges is still at commissioning. Tons of data, often paperwork are handed over. In a lot of cases, a redigitization of the full asset has to take place, partly at the cost of design. So we believe that this approach becomes more and more obsolete. Project goals are translated into client requirements. They are based on an exchange information requirements or so-called EIRs. Requirements which also consider carbon neutrality goals during construction and for operations. Those requirements will become more machine readable either on IDS, information delivery specification, or others like IDM, MVD, et cetera, and they will be applied in projects. Hence why it is clear from the beginning in planning and construction, what asset data and what quality is needed. So the client defines, the contractor collects, and hence over the data. But this needs a proper foundation a true common data environment, a CDE, which fulfills specifications and standards like DeanSpec 91391, ISO 19650, a CDE, which empowers an organic handover from the project to the asset. So as shown in the product presentation before, all comes together in the Oracle Smart Construction Platform. The smart construction platform is data centric by design, deploying a central open common data environment. No data is lost. Everyone works in the same common data environment, capturing a complete record of every project and asset to form the digital twin of the asset as it evolves. So by its n-dimensional approach, the smart construction platform can support certifications like the mentioned Leeds, Briam or DGNB, and carbon footprint requirements can be defined, the data collected and monitored. Oracle's smart construction platform is driving the industry next leap forward in performance and supports developments towards decarbonization. We connect, empower, and synchronize across the plan, build, operate lifecycle. The smart construction platform brings more intelligence to our clients for pursuing their carbon neutrality goals. And to support the building of the digital twin from its beginning. Another great example, how we at Oracle Construction and Engineering put the customer in the center of our work. Also for digital twins, our mission is to help people see data in new ways, discover insights and unlock endless possibilities. So thank you for joining the session. We invite you kindly also to check out the other power sessions.